has started this honest method of moment distribution. So first, before actually going for a particular type of problem, let us explain the basic concepts involved in this Cornish method of moment distribution. So let us consider a plane frame structure, rigid plane frame structure. That means this is a rigid plane frame structure wherein all members lie in one plane and all members are line elements and all these elements they are rigidly connected. So that means moment is allowed. It is not in connected type of frame. In connected will not be considered at all because we are talking about moment distributions only. Even in displacement method of slope reflection, we are writing the moment equation only. So that is why we didn't analyze any test problems in my slope reflection equation method of analysis. Only beams and rigid frame analysis only we are doing. No dress problem, no pin jointed structures we are, we are considering. Same case with moment distribution also, we were distributing only the moments and arriving at the final moment and doing the analysis only with moments. At the end, some members we were treating as the unknown and that we are evaluating during the analysis. There in moment distribution also, we are not doing any dress type of problem wherein in dress each member is being connected. So here we have, have taken a problem that is rigid plane frame problem which consists of two beds and three stories with uh, uh, members interconnected at joints and this consists of all these joints which are continuous and rigidly connected and some joints at the support, preferably at the boundaries, they are fixed as well as hinge. So you know at each joint, since it's a plane frame structure, there will be three degrees of freedom. That means we are talking about only displacements. Three displacements are possible because generally we talk about displacement means translation and rotation. So along three axes, which we call it as the global axis, you can have one translation and one rotation angular and translatory type of displacements on account of the loading acting on the members at the ends of each joint. Like that we have three axes, six displacements are possible at each joint. But out of these six displacements, in the case of plane frame structures, we have only three. The other three are out of plane displacements. Because if you take this particular joint here, this translation, this translation, they are in the plane possible. Whereas the translation in z direction, it is out of plane, that is not there. So out of three translations, only two translations are possible. Similarly, out of three rotations, rotation about the x-axis as well as y-axis, they are out of plane, but rotation about z it will be within the plane itself, so we consider only rotation about z-axis. So like that, we have only three types of possible displacement at any joint on account of the loading on a plane frame rigid structure. Of course, at some joints, some are possible, some may not be possible. Here at fixed joints, all three displacements are zero. Here, only rotation is possible, but definitely the rotations will be possible at almost all joints except at fixed joints. Out of two translations, the vertical translation is because all the vertical members in the orthogonal rigid frames, they have base of fixed at the foundation level. When they are fixed at the foundation level, they are not supposed to move up or down. They will be fixed at the base. Since they are not allowed to move up or down, this vertical displacement will be taken as zero by assuming all members to be axially rigid. 
actually he gave me are talking about so in the case of actually he gave members the vertical displacement are all zero again it reduces to only horizontal displacement so at each joint of this rigid plane frame structure you can have horizontal displacement that is displacement not going to the axis of the member horizontal displacement will act only not going to the axis of column members that's why i was telling only column members will undergo sway beams will not undergo any sway if at all you undergo sway this support at the base should go should have settlement then only it will have some kind of displacement otherwise no ultimately we have left with only two possible type of displacement translation normal to the vertical axis and rotation at each joint so in general any rigid plane frame structure which has two ends the two ends we call it as j end and k end and the axis of the member will run from j to k that is the positive direction that direction we choose it as the local generalized coordinate system because the loads and joint displacements will be as per the global direction loads also will be in the global direction joint displacements also possibly all in the global direction but when we talk about because of this load so this displacement occurs in the global direction during the analysis we have to find the member end forces for each members that member end forces we talk about with respect to member coordinates or idealized generalized member coordinates so usually the member axis itself is chosen as a one of the coordinates and the other two axis normal to that will be chosen as the other two coordinates that means for horizontal members the x axis will be the general global x axis will be the member axis for all members general y global axis will be the axis of the member so that you have to be very very careful and we are not talking about any inclined mem member analysis here only orthogonal members they are considering so if you take any member it has two ends that is j end and k end and the member we can call it as i so we can have one translated type of displacement normal to the axis of the member another rotatory type of displacement rotation that is angular displacement taken as in the clockwise direction the other displacements always takes along the global coordinate axis and rotation we take clockwise itself as always as the positive direction so two this is called degrees of freedom this displacement generalized displacement along the member coordinates we call as degrees of freedom so though there are generally three degrees of freedom x since we assume members to actually rigid so it will have only two degrees of freedom at each end like that so generally with respect to global system we first analyze the structure for the loads picked out in the global direction and arrive at the global displacement at all the joints global displacement mind it displacement along x along y rotation about so that since we determine each joint then we apply compatibility equation according to compatibility condition not equation condition according to compatibility condition if you take any joint in this structure the displacement of the joint will be equal to the component of the displacements of all members meeting at the joint in the same direction they will be equal that means if the displacement at the joint say j along x direction is u then displacement in this member in this in this in this displacement component along horizontal direction it will be u only similarly if b is the 
displacement on account of the load in the vertical direction, then the component of the stage end at this end for this member is this, this. They are all same B. That is the compatibility condition. That is component of displacement at any end of the member, all members meeting at a joint will be same and that will be equal to joint displacement. So using that condition, having analyzed the load and arriving at the displacement using that Glomer force displacement relationship. This is not the this constant the stiffness I told because already I have given within the elastic limit force applied is proportional to displacement or P is equal to K where K is the property of that particular material as well as cross section of the member that is stiffness. Then that is the thing. This K also can be determined knowing the external load and this K value, you can determine at each joint what was the displacement. Applying compatibility condition, so we can get the displacement at each joint, whether the left hand joint or near end joint or far end joint. Left hand we call it as near end joint and the other joint we call it as the far end joint. Knowing the displacement at the joint, the member and forces again you can calculate using the again force displacement relationship with respect to member axis individually. So that is why that is how we can analyze the member and forces as well as displacement in a given structure. That is the basic methodology of the structure. Given the loading in the structure, taking the joints with respect to your global coordinates, arriving at the displacement at each joint, then applying the compatibility condition at each joint, taking the displacement at the ends of each member, and with respect to the local generalized coordinate of the member, we can arrive at the member and forces. Our displacement is also known. This is the general concept of displacement method of analysis. This is exactly what we have done in your slope reflection method of analysis. So first you have the developed an equation for the member and forces in, in terms of the joint displacement. Then you have taken the loads, the equivalent joint loads and you have solved those equations, arrived at the displacement. Then again you have taken the force displacement relationship for each member and everything and forces. Same kind of thing even moment distribution. The same type of basic concept it will be used in the Collins method also. Here so in general we can always say the member and forces because the member and forces will be shear and moment. Axial we don't consider. Yes. We should know first that out of this this shear, we are not going to determine, only moment we select as the unknown. That's what I was repeatedly telling in the other methods also. Only moments are chosen as the unknown end forces to be determined. This unknown member end forces at any near end of the member can be taken as some rotation factor into some of the that is a fixed end moment, F E a fixed end moment at the near end due to whatever load is coming. That is first you assume the members to be fixed. Don't allow any displacement at the end of any member due to that whatever fixed end moment which happens at the near end of the member you can take it. Then at this end due to rotation whatever force developed, that also you can calculate that is moment due to rotation at that near end. That rotation on account of the given external load displacement. That due to rotation, that you can determine by stiffness of the member. Stiffness may be defined as the force developed due to unit rotation, whatever 
moment the displacement occurs and whatever slope occurs at that point using the, that slope you multiply by the stiffness you will get the moment due to that force that is the near end moment then moment due to far end far end rotation whatever the moment occurs here that you have to take so the moment at the same near end due to rotation at that near end then moment due to far end rotation this is m n r this is m n s then sway that is due to the translation of this relative translation of this member due to this sway so you have moment and that at moment at the near end due to sway so in general you can find the equation for the moment at any end that is near end of the member as sum of the fixed end moment not allowing any displacement the moment at that end due to rotation at that end near end then moment due to rotation at the further end then moment due to sway translation so this is the generalized equation we are going to get the total moment developed multiplied by rotation factor why we are doing this means suppose if this member if i take so the total moment comes at the joint always that moment will be taken by this member in proportion to their rotation factor or distribution factor so this is the total moment we get at any joint at any joint the total moment developed will be due to fixity due to rotation at that end due to rotation at the further ends of all the members making at the joint and also due to sway of all members meeting that joint total we take it as the moment developed at that particular joint that moment developed will be shared by the all the members meeting at that joint in proportion to this rotation factor so this is the basic equation we use in conic method of analysis for calculating the moment developed at any end of a member of this frame structure on account of this total load applied so this equation we have to remember here how to work out this rotation bands moment as well as sway moment again we use the same concept by the member so this each member we allow we to rotate or translate and due to that what are fixed and moment and all those things develop that also we will take it add it and then have it done all this is through an example i can better i can i can explain all these things with reference to an example and show how to arrive at the end moments let us take an example of the beam 